the differential approach to graphical interaction provides flexible, combinable controls for direct manipulation. This video demonstrates how these controls can be applied in graphical interaction. The differential approach provides flexibility in the controls used to manipulate graphical objects. For example, the user can manipulate the Luxo lamp by dragging various parts of it, such as its base, its head, or its bulb. The approach also permits other things to serve as controls. For example, we can directly manipulate the target of the lamp's light. Controls can be combined. The user or the system can mix and match controls as needed. This interface permits the user to lock point controls to make them serve as constraints. This video uses examples from applications built with the Bramble Interface Toolkit to show how flexibility in controls and the ability to combine controls can be used in graphical interaction. The differential approach permits the user to manipulate values of attributes of graphical objects by using constrained optimization to map changes in the controls to changes in the object parameters. Here, we drag positions of points on curves to manipulate the objects. The interface is automatically defined from information we needed to know to draw the object. No special purpose interface code is needed for new object types. Both the implementation and the interface are uniform. Other quantities can also be controlled. For example, here we attach the length of a line segment to a slider. A single control usually does not fully specify the behavior of an object. The differential approach permits objects to define an optimization objective that specifies a default. If the default behavior of an object is not what the user wants, additional controls can be used to specify what is desired. The differential approach permits using a variety of things as interactive controls. In 2D, we might control the position of a point, the orientation of a line segment, the distance between two points, or the relative orientations of two line segments. Such controls are often locked in place to serve as constraints while other controls are manipulated. The differential approach lets the application decide how to present constraints to the user. In 3D, we can also drag points, here using a 3D input technique called the mouse pull. The differential approach provides mechanisms so that objects can have reasonable behaviors when dragged. A vast array of other properties might also be controlled. The flexibility of the differential approach allows the application to provide controls that fit the user's needs. Many of these controls work best as constraints while other controls are manipulated. We call directly controlling the place where a point appears in the image a through-the-lens camera control. Such controls influence objects, but also can be used to control the camera creating the image. 
Controls for lighting include manipulating the position of a point light source, manipulating the position of a spot light source, or directly manipulating the target of a spotlight. Both real shadows and simple drop shadows can be manipulated. Manipulating a shadow can affect the position of the object or the position of the light source. Although my system can only display shadows on the ground plane, inter-object shadows can still be directly manipulated. The effects will be seen when the image is rendered. We can also directly control the color that a point appears. Here, we use sliders to manipulate the color of the point circled in white. This can be used to manipulate the object geometry, the position of the light source, the color of the light source, or even the material properties of the object. By switching constraints on and off at appropriate moments, Interesting interactions can be defined. Dragging is accomplished by turning a control on and off when the mouse button is pressed. Constraints, when created, turn on controls. Removing constraints turns off controls. Boundary, or inequality constraints, are created by turning on controls when conditions are violated. This is called an active set technique. This example uses an inequality to prevent the sphere from shadowing the cubes. The light is moved as needed. By turning inequality constraints on and off, non-overlap constraints can be created. This can be used as a simple method for simulating kinematic collisions. While not as good as special purpose simulation methods, collisions with a differential approach are good enough to do some interesting things like these gears. Actually, these aren't really gears, but rather they are saw teeth. This is why the motion is not smooth when a constant torque is applied to the left object. Snapping, or gravity fields, can also be achieved by switching controls. When the point nears its target, a control is turned on that drives it to its goal. If the user pulls harder, the constraint is removed. This gives a feel like dragging a bead around on a grooved surface. Combining controls and constraints is an important part of the differential approach. Using multiple controls as constraints permits the user to define the behavior of compound objects by assembling simpler pieces. This application permits the user to assemble pieces to build planar linkage mechanisms. The motor objects can be driven continuously to animate the contraptions. Ink trails are provided to trace the behavior. Constraints can also serve as building blocks for interactions. For example, 
A single through the lens constraint does not provide enough control to be useful in most cases. However, combinations can be used to position objects or to control the view. In this example, matching corners of the virtual table and the video image allows the virtual camera to be registered to the real image. The cyan rectangle has the same dimensions as the table. Dragging the corners of the rectangle places the virtual plant properly on the real table. Through the lens controls can also be combined with other constraints. For example, to create 3D widgets. This translation jack operates by first constraining the object to only translate in the direction of the arrow, and then uses a through-the-lens control to connect the handle to the mouse. Other virtual controllers use similar constraints combined with through-the-lens controls. The differential approach provides a quick way to define the behavior of the widgets permitting us to explore the design space. A virtual trackball-like interaction is defined by using constraints that pin down the center of the universe while the camera is manipulated with a through-the-lens control. This Tinker Toys application illustrates how the differential approach can be used. The application lets the user assemble 3D structures from predefined pieces. Constraints, implemented by locking controls, hold the structures together. Interaction techniques are defined by employing sets of controls. The differential approach permits combining flexible controls that can enable a variety of interesting interaction techniques and applications. There are many ways that these abstractions of the differential approach can be employed in interaction. It is up to the application to use the flexibility in ways that meet the user's needs.